All right, guys, we're back. What's going on? So we're going to do some uh, throttle restoration today and uh, linkage restoration. But let me show you real quick. If you guys follow my Instagram, I posted up some of the new parts that came in. Uh, if you watched the last video, you saw that I got a whole bunch of parts in, uh, but the Fox floats didn't come in and some other stuff. So all that stuff came in. I'm going to show you right now. Here it is. So like I said, if you saw on Instagram, I did post this stuff. These Fox floats are sick. These are evil RC2s. They do have the dust cover. They're in the Fox box. I'm not going to get them out right now. I just wanted to show you these parts. They're super trick though. And they're lightweight. They're really light. A lot lighter than traditional shocks. These are long travel. I'm super excited to run these things. From what I understand, the floats are like a real treat to run. I've never, ever even ridden a quad with Fox floats. Uh, that's a lie. Uh, there was one quad I rode, but they were totally blown, so that doesn't count. So these are supposed to have, like, infinite adjustability. Um, they have a little air pump and everything in there. That's really sick. Uh, maybe at the end of this video, we'll do a quick little uh, run through of the parts. We got the AS ASV uh, levers, kill switch, some brake pads, EBC carbon, the little um, brake line stays for the streamline kit. I did get the extended lines also. A bunch of this stuff just kind of came in differently. I got a kill start. We're not going to run the stock stuff. Remember guys, this is a motocross build, so we're not going to have um, like a headlight or anything. We don't really need the normal switch. Got the pro contour, pro taper bars, and the, the bend is ATV mid. Um, I don't know that I've ever run this bend before, but I'm going to try it. Um, it's supposed to have like not that much pullback, which is supposed to be good for motocross. I always like Pro Taper stuff. I love their grips. I love uh, their bars. So we'll give them a shot. And I did get a bearing carrier also. It's a dual row. It was missing the grease zerk. They're going to be sending me another one. And that actually is a no-name brand carrier. I'm going to try rocking it. Um, there's a reason that I went with it. It was on Amazon.com. I bought it from Amazon. And the reviews were really good for it. And um, some guy had actually bought them. And he took a either calipers or a micrometer, checked all the specs, and it was supposed to be very, very close. Now, I've run the eBay carriers before on a number of quads, and I have a couple friends that run them. So, granted, I don't run motocross, not typically. And I'm kind of like, I would say, like light on riding. So, you know, you do typically get what you pay for. Um, we're going to see what happens. So, I haven't had problems with them in the past. At worst, you know, I can always swap it out. Hopefully it doesn't like tank the entire rear end if it does go out, but we're going to try it out. So in this case, they were, it was 40 bucks. It's like, I'm going to try it and do a review on it. Everything else on this bike is premium. Um, I feel like you can't really mess up a carrier really where it's going to come down to is the quality of the bearings and you know, we'll see what happens. So if you guys think I'm an idiot, let me know in the comment section below, whatever. Buy me an LSR carrier and I'll use it. <laughs> okay, so we actually have a magical package that came also, and um, we're going to open this up really soon. Here's the magical package right here, and when you guys see what's inside, you're going to be like, oh, where did you get that? I want to get one too. Well, at least the 250R, guys. So, all right, let's get started with this video. All right, guys, well, our bench is pretty clear here. If you've been watching the most recent videos, this thing is usually covered with parts and boxes and stuff. Uh, but today is going to be a pretty simple video. What we're going to be doing is taking this throttle and we're going to restore it. So, of course, we've already removed our thumb throttle. There's really nothing wrong with it other than it just looks old and it's dirty and everything. Um, so what we're going to do is take this cover off and we're going to be replacing it with this Nelson Precision manufacturing cover. And um, then while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and polish up this Honda one too. And it's gonna look freaking sick. In fact, I'm gonna show you a picture right here. Just take a look at that. Isn't that nice? Look at it all shiny and everything. Yeah, that's right. And before we go ahead and put that new NPM cover on, we're gonna polish up the body here. We'll probably strip the coating and everything. And we'll bring this up to a mirror polish and clean up the actual thumb, the uh, thumb lever and everything. And it's gonna look pretty sweet. Give you guys a look at this NPM cover. For you guys to follow, I'm sure you're familiar with NPM by this point. They've hooked me up with a lot of parts for this build. Mine is in a custom flat dark earth Cerakote. Yeah, that's right, it's custom. You should be jealous. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove this cover. And there is a gasket in here. 
I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm, I did order a new gasket for this. Um, as far as I can tell, Honda does not offer the OEM gasket any longer, but it is available. You can get remakes from uh, BDT. They're on eBay. It's um, With shipping, it's like 10 bucks. You get two gaskets. Not a bad deal. So I'll give you guys a look inside the thumb throttle. If you've ever rebuilt your thumb throttle or replaced your cable, you're probably familiar with it. Um, there's a couple moving pieces in here. I believe that is to make the pull a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and we will flatten down this little lock washer and we'll remove our lever and take all of our pieces apart so that we can get to stripping down the body. And inside here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little cotter pin. It's so small, you can, you can really do it with your fingers. So you gotta pull that out. I have no idea where that went. So now we'll pull this actuator art out. A spring. And we're pretty much done here. There's a little pin that's gonna come out the bottom. So these are all the parts laid out here. It's kind of complex for a thumb throttle, like more than you would think. I did find that microscopic um, cotter pin. I'm probably gonna need this. I do have cotter pins, but I don't know if I have one this small. So I'm gonna take these parts and I'll clean them up in some degreaser. And then we will get moving on to cleaning up this body. And um, I will scrape off this gasket before I do anything. And we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so we just got this bucket here with some hot soapy water. It's just regular degreaser, dish soap, nothing crazy. I didn't want to use anything too abrasive. I was thinking about maybe using some brake clean to clean up the actuator and stuff, but brake clean can sometimes mess up uh, plastic parts, and we do have that one plastic section there. I'd rather just stay safe. We'll be able to clean everything off with the degreaser. And also to help us out, I got a little bit of simple green here. I know it says window cleaner on it, uh, but it does have simple green in there. I think it's like a 50-50 mixture right about that. What kind of soap is that? I just said it's simple green, but it says window cleaner on there. Yeah, but I just, I just said I replaced it with simple green. It's not simple green. Just shut up. Someone in the comment section is gonna ask what kind of soap that is. So yeah, it's simple green and a little bit of dish soap with extra heavy degreaser in it. And of course we're gonna be using the Old Faithful toothbrush. And then I'm gonna brush my teeth with it after. And uh, yeah, we'll just get to scrubbing away and this stuff should come off pretty easy. All right, so our parts are all clean. You can see they came out pretty nice. Scrubbed them down, rinsed them off with some clean water. Everything came out really nice. Uh, somewhere in the process, I lost that microscopic cotter pin. I'm not too worried about it. I should be able to pick one of those up at the local hardware store. If not, I can order one online. And um, me being an idiot, I forgot to take my before pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing back together and then we'll get to uh, stripping the black off of our throttle cover and the throttle body. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna strip these parts. So I did wanna point out there is a seal in this thumb throttle. This seal seems to be in good shape and I don't feel like messing with it. So we're just gonna leave it in there for now. I would pull it out, but that kinda, you kinda risk in destroying the seal if you do that. So we'll just try to avoid it. Um, so what we're gonna use here is some stripper. You can pick this stuff up at Walmart or Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. This one is by Clean Strip. I've used it before, it usually works really well. So um, depending on what this is coated with, um, this should take the stuff off. So we're gonna use a little paintbrush here and we'll paint it on and let it sit for five to 15 minutes. And sometimes you gotta do a couple coats and we'll see if we can get all that black off. Okay guys, so moving on to the linkage. The linkage is really dirty and everything. And I don't wanna put it back together the way that it is. So we are going to be getting to um, putting this linkage uh, back together while taking it apart first and uh, cleaning it up. And then we will be getting into what is into this magic package. Um, but first and foremost, let's clean up the linkage in our professional parts cleaner, which is just a wheelbarrow filled up with soapy water. Oh yeah. Cleaning up these dull, dingy, shitty parts. Busting out the scraper and the screwdriver for this one. And of course the awesome. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this bad boy, make it a little easier to clean up. So these parts cleaned up pretty nicely um, and I do have some aluminum brighter that I was thinking on sp about spraying on here possibly get this like yellowish tint off and uh, as I was cleaning I remembered that I have this tumbler uh, when I did the Banshee the first time around for project budget budget Banshee I used this tumbler to do every single bolt and they came out beautifully so the stainless steel bolt kit that we got from PVC racing is going to be awesome but there's a couple bolts that don't come with it um, and that is the the linkage bolts. I'm not sure if these other two, if these smaller linkage bolts come, but the specialty bolt with the grease zerk does not come in the kit. So we're gonna have to um, <clears throat> restore that bolt. So what I'm gonna do is take all this stuff. I'm gonna take the seals and everything, put them in the tumbler. We're gonna put some simple green in there, mixed with water, and we'll let it run, do its thing. Um, probably let it run for like two hours or so, and then we'll pull out these parts and we'll see what they look like. And as opposed to actually using like the buffing wheel and stuff, which was actually what I was planning to do. And uh, we'll see if this grease zerk and stuff cleans up. I was really, really astounded with how well this thing works. We're gonna be using the triangular media. They look like little pyramids with, uh, like I said, the simple green and stuff. And we'll see how this stuff comes out. And then we will get to opening up the magic package. All right, so while we're waiting for that tumbler to clean up those bolts and linkage, we'll get back to our thumb throttle and we'll see how this acid did, and then we'll get to our magical package. So, um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the stripper did anything at all. It's possible that it loosened it up. It's not a problem. And that stripper has been um, open for like over a year, so it might be that the stripper's expired, but it's no problem. We can get this stuff off with a wire wheel, buff this stuff right off, and we will make this thing look like brand new. So I'm gonna clean off the acid and then we'll get the buffing. All right, so we were over at this soft wire wheel. You guys are probably familiar with this if you followed the Banshee series, cleaned up a lot of parts using this thing. So this should take the finish right off of these parts and then we should be able to polish it up with the other side with this uh, buffing wheel. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So make sure to wear safety glasses when you're doing this and let's see what it does. All right, well, we got this thing stripped down pretty much as far as I can go with the wire wheels. Um, there's two little spots that were tough in here. You can see that, and where is it? In, in here. There's spots you're not really gonna see. Um, and I think they might come off with what we're gonna do next here in a second. So basically, I was gonna polish this up, but you know, I'm thinking about it, and it's not really gonna go with this build. So um, for the people that are following Project 250R, it's a military build and it's not really a flashy quad. We're using a lot of neutral and earth colors and uh, pretty much the only shiny pieces on the quad are gonna be the expansion chamber and uh, the front bumper is chrome, but everything else is flat black, sand colored and kind of neutral. So I think if we, if we polish this up and made it really shiny, I don't really think that would look that good. I mean, it'll look good. I just don't think it's gonna match as good as it could. So I'm actually gonna throw this thing in the tumbler since we have it out. I'll pull out the seal. Um, and we'll throw this thing in the tumbler. And the thing with the tumbler is it leaves a really nice, even, very OEM look. It'll probably just be like a very flat aluminum color and it'll make everything even. And it might even get the little bit of black out of the crevices and stuff. And it'll probably clean all this stuff up too. 
So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the tumbler and then we'll do the cover and we can polish that because we're not going to be using that on this build. All right, now this thing's been running for about an hour. So I figured I'd just check up on our parts and check this out, man. Those greasy grease seals, they look like brand new. These are actually good seals too. So I think what I'm going to do is pull the seals out now because these don't need any more time in there and I don't want the rubber wearing away. And we'll drop that thumb throttle in there. All right, guys, so we got just about everything off. You can see there's a tiny little smidge in that crevice there, right here, little tiny bit there. I just wanna get the polish in this thing. So we are gonna use a regular buffing wheel We've got some medium compound and some fine compound. We're going to hit this thing. Be careful not to get in those letters too much because you'll see the compound builds up in there. It's kind of inevitable. But yeah, let's we'll hit it and we'll see what it looks like. All right, guys, there it is. It's not the best job. If I really wanted to, I could make this thing like a mirror. Um, I'd have to sand it first. That's really what you should do if you're gonna polish something, but I'm not even running this cover, so I just kind of wanted to clean it up. I think it looks pretty good though. Definitely better than it did. So you let me know, guys, you think I should run the Honda cover or the NPM cover? I don't know. Well, we're running the NPM cover. All right, guys, so it is I don't know, about nine hours later. So this thing's been running for, I guess about 15 and 16 hours. Hmm. Not really what I was expecting. All right guys, so check it out. This is how the stuff came out. Um, a lot of this stuff looks really good. I already knew this with the bolts. Let me see if I can, there we go. They come out looking like brand new. All the little nooks and crannies and stuff get cleaned up really nice. That grease circ is really clean. So I'm really happy with that. No surprise there. Um, all these sleeves and everything came out really nice. Stuff just looks like brand new. Here's the, uh, I threw the swing arm bolt in there, or nut rather. And these um, grease seals came out really nice. Some of them are shot, but for the most part, um, these are actually in really good shape. See a little bit of rust, rust uh, flashed in there. Here is our the, the uh, throttle, thumb throttle body. This didn't exactly come out the way that I wanted. It does look good, don't get me wrong. There's still a little bit of black coating in there. I couldn't get in there with the, uh, the wire wheel. And I thought that was gonna come off too, but you can see it's kind of uneven. It's like the, um, the casting of this is just kind of ugly. But it does look better than it did, I think. And of course our linkage cleaned up very nicely. Again, the grease zerk came out really nice. I'm not sure what this is made of. Um, it's some kind of steel or alloy because it's magnetic, uh, but it doesn't seem to rust. I think it would have flash rusted by now. And I noticed there was no rust on it when I pulled it off. I don't know if it had some kind of zinc coating or some kind of coating on it. And hopefully that didn't wear off in the vibrator. But like I said, it didn't flash rust. So I'm going to leave this as it sits. And here is the rest of our linkage. That yellow stuff came off. You can see I left a little bit on here so you guys can see. I think that was some kind of coating. And I can get that off too. Um, this side looks really good. It basically looks like new aluminum. And that's wh what I was going for. Um, because of this little stuff here. And a little bit of yellow that's left. I'm going to hit this with some fine steel wool just on the surface areas to clean this up. And then we'll call that good. And I know some of you guys are going to be really pissed at me for this, but I'm actually going to coat this. Um, I would powder coat it if I had the means to, but I don't have the means to powder coat here. And I'm not going to send this out and wait like a week or two to get this thing done just for one piece. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to coat it 
Um, if you guys followed the budget uh, Banshee build, all my stuff usually comes out really good and it's really durable. And it's a thumb throttle, so I'm not worried about it. Pretty much everything else on this bike is going to be powder coated. So I think what I'm going to do is paint this silver. I'll uh, hit it with a self-etching primer, coat it. And I'm probably not going to do clear coat on this one because I don't want it to be like ultra glossy. Remember, guys, this is not supposed to be a flashy build. That's why we're not going to use the polished cover. And it's not. It's why we're not polishing this. The whole idea is kind of like a flat, stealthy look. Um, I'm not sure I have any flat silver with me right now, but I think a regular silver finish is going to make this look really good. All right, guys, so the parts are all cleaned up. The surfaces are already pretty rough as they are. So I'm going to hit it with some self-etching primer, and then we'll move on to the top coat. So about 10 minutes with the steel wool, and that's how she came out. Looking good. All right, guys, so the time has come. It's time to open the magical package. All right, guys, so we're about to find out what's in the magical package. What could it possibly be? Oh my God, it's a linkage rebound kit for the 250R. Oh my God, how is this even possible? This is insane! All right, all right, I know I'm getting a little bit out of hand here. Um, for a lot of you guys, you're probably like, dude, what the f***? That is not a magical package. But for the 250R guys, you know, this is a discontinued kit, and you can't get linkage rebuild kits for the 250R any longer. And I think it's actually been a couple years since Pivotworks has offered this kit or anybody else. And I had to do a ton of research to find this thing. Um, if you guys are following the build and you're on the 250R forums and whatnot, I posted... Um, a thread trying to find to locate a rebuild kit or see if there's a you know a kit that somebody makes aftermarket or something and there is um, there's a guy named Gil that builds um, the bushings and they're top notch quality and stuff but they're 125 bucks which was a little steep at least in my opinion not to say that they aren't worth it especially if you can't get the parts but they didn't come with seals or anything so I did find this kit from Pivotworks and some of you guys are probably like oh, where'd you get that I want to buy one um, unfortunately <laughs> I did find these at a parts dealer. Um, I will post up the link right here. You know, maybe with luck, they will get these restocked somehow, or maybe they have the stock incorrect. Um, but it was WSM. And um, essentially how I found this is I just, you know, I put my, my face to the grind, man. And I was searching all these websites, every single parts website that you could possibly think of. Um, I was searching it. Most of these places didn't even carry linkage kits. I just searched like every parts site, auto parts sites and everything until I finally found WSM. Um, there were a number of sites that said they had these and I ordered it and then I got a message back saying that the stock uh, was incorrect and they had to cancel the order. Um, and I was expecting the same thing to happen with WSM, but I purchased it and I got a track. I got a, I got a confirmation email. It's crossing my fingers, but it did say it was automated. So I was still expecting that I would get the email or a phone call saying that the order could no longer be um, you know, filled. And then sure, sure enough, I got a tracking number. And then I thought maybe I'd get the wrong part number in the mail, but there it is, man. The PWLK H23020 TRX250R 1986 to 1989. So I called the company up and said I would buy out the stock, and I did buy out their entire stock, which was two. So I got two kits. The other one is coming in the mail. And um, unfortunately, guys, it's not going to be for sale. I'm going to hang on to it for a future build. But yeah, guys, so that is how I got the package. So yeah, guys, that was the magical package. Some of you guys may be disappointed. In fact, some of you may even be angry. Some of you might have been expecting a brand new pre-owned Yamaha Banshee or, you know, a letter that came in the mail that said two vintage is no longer allowed to create videos because they're so god awful. But you know what? You can't always get what you want in life. So let's install these bushings. Well, guys, this is going to be pretty straightforward. I referred to the manual and essentially um, if you got the gist of it, when you pull this thing apart, it literally just pulls apart. There's no bearings or anything that need to be pressed or tapped out. And all you really do is push the bushings out, put the uh, take the seals off, and then put new bushings and seals on. Um, what we're going to do is just lightly coat these with some grease. And then once everything's together, obviously you want to hit your grease zerks and make sure everything is packed with grease. But for now, like I said, we're just going to coat um, the bushings. And I like to put a thin coat 
on the inside of the rubbers. I think that keeps the, uh, the health of the rubber kind of like nice and soft and it keeps seal all the grease in. All these are nice and snug and I just like to kind of roll them around, make sure that you're get, uh, lining the inside of the actual linkage with grease. You really can't mess this up because each one of these bushings can only fit in one hole and these two that are the same over here are interchangeable. And then with these seals, just like to put thin coating of grease on them. And they literally just pop right into place. And one last thing I wanted to add with these um, cup seals that go on, these ones go on the outside here. You'll see there's like an inner lip. And you gotta be careful, you don't wanna just jam these on because what'll happen this is one of the old ones. You can see this lip is torn and pushed down. Most likely when this was installed, this was just shoved on and the seal was ripped. You don't want that to happen. So the way that I get them on is I'll usually start on one half and you kind of push that seal and spin it. And it goes right on. And you should be able to tell, you know, if it's not sitting flush, um, that you probably fold that lip under. So you just wanna be careful of that. All right guys, so our linkage is complete. Our thumb throttle is dry and it's looking sick. We're gonna put it together. I'm gonna to show you exactly what it looks like right after these brief messages. Ooh. Sorry, I'm late. Happy Valentine's Day. You're not mad at me, are you? Is it because of the 250R? The CRF, really? That was years ago. Look, I know I haven't been riding you much lately. It's not even riding season. Oh, now you're gonna ignore me? Okay, I know, I know. I love you. Oh, you got me something. <laughs> I love it. I'll wear it all the time. Hey, I got you something too. Your favorite. up valentine's day you can still redeem yourself by purchasing one of these fly michael sabo t-shirts it's not too late redemption of a failed relationship or lousy dinner date is atypical it is not guaranteed that you will get action on valentine's day but purchasing one of these shirts will increase your chances dramatically all proceeds support the michael sabo youtube channel all sales are final all right guys check it out we got everything laid out here here is that throttle body well thumb throttle body you can see how that finish came out personally i think it looks tits you can see I didn't get any paint in here. We're gonna put our seal in there. Uh, made sure we didn't get anything in our threads. Surfaced the top of this with a little bit of sandpaper on the bench. So this thing's ready for assembly. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is put in this little actuator assembly. There are some moving parts here. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of grease around here and hit this with a little bit of grease. Just any moving parts, just a little dab. This is the spring for the actuator. It hooks on that little post right there and then lays into place. And hopefully I can get this thing on there without too much trouble. I think it might be easier to get this spring on, putting it up through the plastic and hooking it like that. And then hooking it on the post in here. Yeah, that's a lot easier. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease under here place our washer and then this little pin comes up through the bottom and that's where our microscopic cotter pin goes which I was unable to find so I just made one out of this little piece of wire and that should work just fine so I sort of made like a little hitch pin in there that ought to be perfect Add a little bit more grease right here. 
Now we're gonna throw in our actual lever. There is a small plastic washer that goes on here. Just slide it right into place. That lever, I did hit that with some um, quadruple zero steel wool to smooth it out. Feels nice and smooth. Place this over top and then just spin until you get that square portion lined up and it pops into place. Put our lock washer on and then spin down our nut. Feels like brand new. That's as far as I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna tighten this down or flatten out the lock washer because I'm probably gonna have to disassemble this to get our throttle cable on anyway. So just for demonstration purposes, I threw it together. And now we gotta throw these covers on, man. All right, so let's see what it looks like with the polished cover first. Whew, I don't know. It looks pretty fresh. Pretty good, pretty good. Now let's see what it looks like with the NPM cover. Woohoo. I think we have a winner. All right, guys, so our linkage is completely rebuilt. Our thumb throttle is totally rebuilt. It's ready to rock and roll. Just have to wait for that gasket to come from BDT. And uh, let me know if you think I made the right decision on this throttle cover. I think I definitely made the right choice. I'm gonna show you right here what it looks like up against these sand colored plastics. And I will have an update on what's going on with those for guys following the build. So that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I have to get to editing because it actually is Valentine's Day right now and I have a shitload of editing to do. So make sure to follow me on Instagram at michaelsabo350. Don't forget to get your Mike Sabo merch. Uh, I did get this shirt in. It came a little bit, it's, it's not as vibrant as I thought it would be um, as it is in the picture, but it still looks awesome. So definitely hook yourself up with one. All the proceeds help out the channel. And in closing, guys, I'm gonna open up that Fox Shock box just like I said I would, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy Valentine's Day. I love all you guys. You'll rock. Boom, so that's how it came. Nice little letter here for everybody following the build. If you remember, I got that little ASV dust cover. He's basically telling me exactly what happened. They were on back order, so they sent stuff out in separate packages. ATV Galaxy was a class act. Got my ASV levers. Brake lines. These were wrapped. I just pulled them out. And on this side, Pro Design kill switch was in there. The brake line stays. And these are those guards that some people were telling me that I need to be running in carbon fiber. We're just gonna run the uh, the Fox plastic ones for now. Air pump. Oh, that's the other ASV dust cover. <laughs>